Hey there internet, what's up? You're joining me on a very special night. Today is the 20th of July 2018 and we're doing this little bit right now called Balcony Astronomy where we talk about astronomy on this big huge balcony right here. And you're joining us on a very special night. Today is the 20th of July, it's the 49th anniversary of the Apollo moon landings and I'm about to do a really short video to talk about that. I've got my recording set up right here. But before that, I wanna talk about some really special alignments tonight because if you look behind me right there to where my arm is pointing there that's Jupiter right there that point of light now it's actually quite close to the moon the moon has already kind of slipped behind the roof of the building but it was clearly observable today on the um, 20th of July 2018 as it was the same case the same alignment with the moon and Jupiter really close that's Jupiter the moon is just like on the, the right over there it just disappeared over the roof just now and it was there it's Jupiter and the moon which should totally be the name of a really awesome indie band but that's Jupiter that's one treat but the sky the gift that keeps on giving right behind me right there that's Mars okay that red pinprick right there that is Mars the fifth planet and so you can think of it as an alignment. We're on the third rock from the sun, Earth. Then we can go to Mars, and then we can go to Jupiter. Essentially, we're hitting an outwards direction in our solar system. This is really like when astronomy gives you goosebumps moments. So we're standing on Earth, then we go to Mars, we go to Mars right there, and then we hit Jupiter right there. And the moon is like, oh, we go from Earth to the moon to Mars and then Jupiter. That's crazy. Amazing night tonight. Anyway, onwards with the show. Hey there, human beings. What's up? And welcome back to Science Epic. I hope you're having an amazing day. Today is the 20th of July 2018. It's a Friday and uh, it might be your typical Friday for a lot of you out there. You're probably getting ready for the weekend, gonna have a lot of fun maybe. Maybe you've got a festival planned. Personally, I recommend Blue Dot Festival at Jodrell Banks near Manchester. It's a festival, it's a science and music festival that happens near uh, an observatory, a radio astronomy observatory. So go there for a whole bunch of science, music and a whole lot of fun. I've never been there but it looks pretty awesome. But anyway, actually we have quite a miraculous event. It's, today is the anniversary of a very miraculous event that happened 49 years ago today. And that is human beings, that's us, for the first time ever left their home on planet Earth and landed on another world out there in the solar system. I'm talking about the moon. We can't really see the moon because it kind of disappeared over the roof. But it was really clear just now alongside with Jupiter after I had finished my exercise, evening exercise and it was really awesome. Now, 49 years ago today, the event that I'm referring to is the Apollo 11 landing, the moon landing that happened on the 20th of July, 1969. That was 49 years ago to this day. Check your watch. Wow, that is today. <laughs> Astronauts Neil Armstrong, Michael Collins, and Buzz Aldrin landed on the moon, and for nearly about nearly a whole day for about 20 hours or so they walked about the lunar surface. Well actually MC, Michael, MC stayed in space like that time after Halo 3. Eh, get that reference. 49 years ago today for the first time in the history of all of us, of all of the earth, a spaceship carrying humans left earth and for a while didn't come back after being caught by the gravity of another celestial body. And I'm about to get a little bit poetic up in here. And to bated breath and fear of possible death, the spacecraft escaped their lunar captor and came safely home. Their human cargo having become the first ambassadors from one world, Earth, to another. Well done, my fellow human brother, well done. I'm sure the trip was really fun. We're really proud of what you've done. Although you didn't make the Kessel run, that translunar injection was pretty damn impressive, son. Rockets like a loaded gun, burning fuel at ignition. They took the biggest ever funded one at 25.4 billion. The mighty, mighty Saturn that flew the mission, Apollo 11. Skrr! Yeah, that's my little limerick on the Apollo missions. So, 49 years ago today, 
we became extraterrestrial explorers. Not yet planetary, because the moon is not a planet. One day maybe, but for now we revel in the success of having sent men to the moon. Still waiting for the first woman though. So I'm here to make, I just want to say a few things to talk about that on the 49th anniversary of the moon landings. What was its significance? Why should we care to remember about that day? Now, I was not alive during that time, but I certainly appreciate the significance of that event, especially if you read into it. I had to do a bit of research about the moon landings before I made this video. And from an engineering perspective, it was definitely an amazing thing that they did technologically. Uh, the rocket that they took, the Saturn V, was the, the biggest, most powerful rocket ever built. Even SpaceX doesn't come close today. It, it, the Saturn V is the rocket with the largest lift capability. <laughs> yeah, and, and it had to have millions of working parts and people that has to work together at the same time just to make it fly. And when they were designing it, they, they, they could even hardly imagine if that monstrous thing called the Saturn V rocket could even fly. And even then, the whole mission, Apollo 11, that's the name of the, the flight designation of Armstrong, Aldrin, and Collins, it didn't go 100% smoothly. On the way down, actually, the, when the lunar module was descending to the surface of the moon, the, the computer on the landing craft, it showed an error, I think 1202. It was something of a computer overload error. And it was the split second decision of a mission control person one of the people at Capcom, the, the ground station, to, to give the green light to proceed in that moment in history. In fact, there was an official announcement prepared just in case the moon landings were to go terribly wrong and those three astronauts were to be stranded on the moon or if they weren't ever to come home from their, from their mission. It was something unthinkable, really. But in the end, they did come back and that was the amazing thing. Now, the event of the moon landing of Apollo 11 was, a, was the high watermark, the peak of the space race, not just from a technological perspective of what was achieved, but also from a civilian and public interest perspective. It really made people awake and wanted to know more and, and tune in to what was happening. It was a moment that was followed by millions of human beings on planet Earth, millions of people from all over our world tuned in via radio and television to watch two out of billions of meant other humans, two humans, two of their fellow humans explore the surface of another world. And while a third human, that's Michael Collins in the command module, kind of like orbited overhead, essentially becoming the moon's own moon. And it's crazy to think that within less than 100 years since inventing the airplane in 1903 with the Wright brothers, in about 66 years, we went to inventing the Saturn V booster, the most powerful rocket ever and then going to the moon, that's, that's insane. And really, I think that the ultimate legacy of Apollo is kind of insane. It's, it's the symbol of a, in the, uh, it's the symbol of achieving the impossible, a symbol of optimism and of daring mighty things and doing incredible things, of constructing this huge and powerful machine, aiming it at another world, strapping three 70 kilogram tanks of mostly water and organic compounds, that's, that's us by the way, and being bold enough, brave enough to press that big red button that would send them skyrocketing into the unknown realm of myth and legend. And after seeing all that, people on earth, people all over the world, they, they would wonder where to next? Where do we go from here? What new wonders would we achieve if we can go to the moon, what else can we do? Maybe fix our environment? Peace in the Middle East? End world poverty and hunger? They're all on the same list and the same driving force that made man go to the moon can perhaps be tapped into to also be used to drive human beings to tackle these other big challenges of our time. And 49 years later, with our world seemingly teetering on the precipice of an uncertain future, I'd I know I am. I think we need that kind of spirit more than ever. And even if you aren't a hardcore space noid like me, who wants to go to the moon simply because it's there. You know, why do you want to go to Everest? Because it's there. I think this famous British explorer once said that. He died, of course, but that's, I digress. 
If you look at the raw potential in humanity that we showed when we went to the moon, that man, that's some really powerful stuff and we would do well to appreciate it. 49 years after the event, 100 years after the event, it's going, it's, it's there forever with us, that sort of spirit of exploration. And of course, there are a lot of political reasons that I talk about in my podcast, uh, 60 Years of the Space Age. You guys check that out on my channel. But appreciate it, just that wonderful spirit, that wonderful aspect of humankind that got us to the moon. So I'll end this presentation today, this hopefully was short enough presentation, with a special performance by this latest cool new band called The Moon Men, singing Goodbye Moon Men from the super awesome animated series Rick and Morty. Moon Men, take it away. Yeah.